Don't miss the brand new releases for the Caradon Overlords. Spiky bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear with you again today, taking a look at the brand new Sky Pirates. These are the very first releases for the Caradon Overlords. We got the Arcanaut Company and the Arcanaut Admiral, which are fantastic looking miniatures. The new Admiral is $25 for the Clam Pack and $45 for the company itself. This is your base battle line or troops in 40k terms for Age of Sigmar. These are the guys that make up the majority of the army for these guys. So you're definitely going to need a lot of these. And they have some options and stuff, and we'll talk about that. And then the Admiral, of course, you know, needs no introduction. He is your Billy Badass General. And of course, he's just a great model to pick up and, and purchase and maybe convert over, paint up, convert him, whatever you want to do, make him 40K, make him a squat. Who knows? These guys are perfect for a squat army based on pick a faction for 40K. Or, of course, you can play them in Age of Sigmar. Now, Let's take a look at the Arcanaut Company. Now you can see on the back here, there are some special weapons in here. Each unit gets to take one of each of these three types of special rules. The Skyhook, or the special weapons, you got the Skyhook, you got the Aether Matic Bali Gun, or the Sky Pike itself. And there's little uh, ammo, extra ammo for this thing, so I guess they reload it and then launch it again. I'm not all up on the rules quite yet. We're still digging into this brand new release here, but it's so cool looking and all this stuff is just so very engrossing. Now each one of these, each, each guy comes with a Privateer pistol standard and Arcanaut Cutter. This is actually the anchor. This is your captain guy right here who comes with a anchor <laughs> and a valley pistol. There's actually another option he can take too uh, instead of that. But these are your base troops. They're really dope. Now I've got my handy dandy Iron Warrior mans out here to give you an idea of the actual scale of these bad boys. And some of you uh, veteran players are going to recognize that they're about the same size as the OG squats. They definitely are and it's uh, something that I, I think is not a comparison that's going to be lost on, on a lot of people there. So right here you can see that there are 25 millimeter bases here. These aren't the big ginormous 32 mils but you're going to see in the special character here that there is a 32 mil because he is his stance is a little bit wider and it looks like the jump troops with the, the little balloons on their back also are that big as well. Now it's a two sprue kit which you can see right here. It's going to have all the options you need, one of each of the special weapons and then all of your uh, the privateer pistols and the Arcanaut cutters themselves right here. Well, we're not going to take a look at those quite yet. Let's take a look at the instruction manual here and see exactly how these guys go together because that is sometimes what half the fun is, is figuring out what the components are that are in this and then we can identify them together on the spruce. So there you can see there's literally 10 different torsos to choose from. And again, they are very similar to the old squat ones in design. But remember, these guys, these, these guys are like straight up out of, you know, some sort of uh, steampunk slash video game type deal so they are going to have a little bit of more bits and bobs on them so you can see on the back here they have the little kind of respirator things that go off top there don't know what the don't know exactly what they are but they definitely look neat and then over here you can see this is the company captain that i was talking about with the volley pistol and they say arcanaut cutter but i think he comes according to the rules he comes with an anchor i don't know if that counts as it but it is what it is right there and then the pistol then you've got the light sky hook option the aether matic volley gun option the arcanaut with the sky pike and you can see they've got all the different options here now these this captain gets the shoulder pads and there's two sets of these believe it or not in the box itself there looks to be that there is 10 different heads that you can use for any variety of equipping these guys. And then on the next page, you can see the Arcanauts themselves right there. You have their cutlass cutters, which can vary between an actual kind of cutlass style thing or an axe itself and their private tier pistols. And then here's the rules for them and how they should all look when you put them together based on which uh, different equipments you give them there but these ones right here should all look about the same given that the arm sets are about the same so you want to have that nice uh, dynamic post you're going to definitely want to select the right torso to go with it for you know the athermatic volley gun right there is going to want to have the guy bracing and kind of having that stance so you could uh, do a little bit of variety with the poses if you wanted to but just keep in mind that it may not always dry fit your stuff because it may not line up is basically what I'm trying to say here and then here you can see the rules they have a four inch move one move each 
uh, six bravery and five up save, and then there's uh, the weapons themselves, the privateer pistol, the aethermatic volley gun, and the light sky hook. Those themselves are a one per squad option. I mean, the range on these is really good, 24 and 18. I mean, that's something you don't normally see in the game itself right there. And then you've got the Arcanaut cutter, the gun butt, which I guess is just another um, where they just bop you in with a close combat weapon equivalent kind of type deal, and, or the sky pike, which is also another one per squad option. So that is a close combat melee weapon. But more G, for the majority, they're all hitting on fours here, wounding on fours. It looks like the, the sky hook wounds on threes with a neg two run at D three damage. So that one's going to be popular, I'm sure. Uh, to take. And then you got the Sky Pike itself, 4-4, four, four, Neg 1, Ren, and D3. You can see the rest of the stats right there. I don't need to read them to you, but that kind of gets us to where we need to be to look at these sprues. And there's, so there's your company, and I think that's a, yep, that's your different options for languages right there. And then there's the paint guide. And the, the Battle Tomb actually has uh, some paint guides in it, believe it or not. That explains to you how to paint them in some of the different uh, Skyport colors because I think there's seven different ones of those. So here you can take a closer look at the sprues themselves. You can see the torsos, or like I said, specific ones do specific things. And then the sky hooks and uh, the light sky hook launcher right there. And there's the, the backpack weapons. There's the sky hook, there's the aethermatic, and of course the barrel in the front, and then all the privateer pistols, and then some of the little respirator things that go on the back. You got the two sets of shoulder pads right there. And it looks like the barrel here to the pistol for the captain right over there. So, oh, and it does come with the two different weapon options. I wanted to look at that. So the, the captain can have, which one is it? The captain himself can have the Aether Flare pistol or the Arcanaut cutter. Okay, so that is the two different options right there. Cool, so that does come with that. And it's very similar for the Admiral too, which we're about to see. I'm not sure, that's a 12 component kit. This one is a 83 component kit. Don't ask me how many of each there are. There's at least one of each torso, one of each arm set, of course. You've got the different axes and you got the cutlasses and then there's 10 heads and then it kind of varies out from there. But this gives you a really good idea of what comes in that. Now, size wise, you can kind of tell here we are on the same size base, a 25 mil base, but there it is. You can definitely tell they are squat size compared to this OG Chaos Space Marine right there comparison in here. Maybe a little bit better one would be right there. Now let's zoom in on this uh, particular sprue here and give you a better look at the components themselves and the detail that's going into them. And there, right there, you can definitely get a better look at the size comparisons, all the detail, all the fantastic work that goes into these is very exceptional. Especially all the extra parts that would be way more detailed on here. They definitely let them left them off to be separate. So it's gonna be a little bit more assembly time on the front end, but you know, as far as the back end goes, they're definitely gonna look way doper on the tabletop. And they almost have to because they're so small, right? Because if you look at the conventional dwarfs from back in the day for fantasy, they didn't look that cool and they were very small. But these I'm very hopeful for because they have all of these cool weapon options and they, they kind of uh, have all these dynamic poses and things sticking up. So it makes them kind of look a little bit more dynamic and a little bigger and more exciting than perhaps some of the, the dwarfs of old in the fantasy line. I mean, obviously the Slayers. Uh, the new Fire Slayers look awesome for Warhammer for, for Age of Sigmar, right? All right, so taking a look at this sprue here, this looks to be the close combat sprue. You can see the cutlass vari uh, variations over the axe variations, some more of the heads, some more of the torsos. Uh, these looks like some rep respirators and heads, nothing too crazy right there. Very standard stuff. Let's zoom in and give you a better idea of just how detailed these are right here. And there you go. You can definitely see a lot of awesome detail in each one of these torsos and even the weapons themselves have fantastic detail work wrought into the arms and there you can see some of the heads down there at the bottom and some more heads and the axes so that is pretty much everything for the $45 Arcanaut company box now let's take a look at the Admiral himself which is like I said a 12 component kit he's $25 comes in a, a traditional clam pack. Now I have opened this just so we can get in here and take a look at it. So there he is. 
I'll give it a little bit of a close up and he does come with a 32 so he is a little bit bigger he's more dynamic he's standing on a a, a pile of molten slag kind of industrial kind of parts there you can see that the front and the back is definitely separate well let's do this let's look at the instructions just so we get a better idea of what parts go where so there you go you can kind of see how this is going to work so the legs look to be kind of a two-part assembly, each leg, and then the torso clam pack or clam shells over it. The backpack is multi-power. Look at this. We've got wires coming out, multiple wires. This reminds me of Gilliman right here. This is really cool. This is gonna look awesomely detailed. And then the valve piece is separate. And his uh, crazy sh uh, what is this sh schlaft hammer? I forget what they call this, but it's not a thunder hammer, <laughs> but it definitely looks like one. So you got the hammer's uh, separate piece, you've got his pistol arm is a separate piece, and it, you do have the two different options for the pistol. Now I'm not sure it comes with the, the parts for it because that looks like the Gatler, the uh, volley pistol right there. And there's his head. So very cool looking, not a whole lot of uh, customizable options, maybe the helm perhaps. I suppose if you really wanted to and you had a different helm you wanted to use, but that looks to be about it right there. Now it doesn't come with a little data slate for him, unfortunately, so you're gonna have to buy the rules to see exactly what he comes with. Actually, he only can be equipped with a volley pistol, my mistake there. Okay, so there's a closer look at it. You can see the two different halves, the front and the back of the torso. The legs right here are definitely separate. There's the head, there's his pistol pieces. Oh wait, there's two different hoses. Nope, that's the valve. Okay, so that's the valve to the backpack, and there's the pistol top, the Gatler part, right there, and there's this uh, dope shaft hammer? Schlaff hammer. I don't know how to say that yet, but we're gonna get there together on that one. But man, this thing is looking super dope, and it's only 12 components. This should go together pretty well, I imagine. But again, Games Workshop knocking it out of the park. $25 for this guy, $40. $45 for the new troop squad. So I think overall looks to be really cool, awesome new miniatures coming our way from Gizor Shop. If you can get your hands on them, they look like they're coming back in stock on the GW store over release weekend. If you didn't, make sure you check out all the normal sources, your local game stores, your GW stores, your online retailers. If you're really into this army, now is the time to get started and get that leg up on everybody else that's trying to pick up this army that is all the rage right now. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.